South Jersey bad boy. <coughs> Sorry, I found a, a cough midway through that. Ooh. <coughs> Sometimes it just it's hard to get the words out when saying the jingle. It's just uh Yeah, just COVID. Just takes your voice away. Just COVID? Yep. What you can you do? Can take my Not voice away. away. What's the you've been screaming at your wife a lot recently? Or what's <laughs> yeah. the uh, that's usually what happens when I lose my voice. Yeah, old uh Old Jackie boy has been very awake. Mm. He is what I like to say the most awake man that's ever been awake. I'm sure you guys have seen some of the pictures on Instagram. Yeah, everyone's comment when they see a picture of Jack is they go, "He's very alert. He's very <laughs> alert." I'm like, "Yeah, fortunately, the kid is up. Yeah, <laughs> and he is awake, and he is how, sweet, how, sweet boy. How many hours a day do you think he's putting in on the old uh, on the old uh, ticker there? You think he's doing uh, what, 22 hours, about 18 a day? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what he's doing. So he's actually – he is sleeping a lot more now, but he's uh, he's he's just still up constantly needing to be fed. So it's like even if he's you put him down for a little bit, it's like every two hours he's Damn. up. He's, uh, and he's cooking. And now it's like I, I feel like you kind of got to entertain him too. He's yeah. like starting to laugh and stuff, which is really, really cute. Yeah, um, <laughs> he's starting to get his way of the world yeah, a little bit. He's looking around. And he's like, "Hey, what are we doing today?" And you're like, "Jesus, <laughs> man, come on! You yeah. just, you just ate. Yeah. Settle down." Yeah, he just wants to go out to the bar, do a couple of ski shots. Scott, shot skis is that what they call them? Wants yeah. to go down to the old rail and just whistle at women. I get oh, it. He's a Donigan. Yeah, he is a Donigan. He That's what they do. That is what they're most known for: is having double fisting, a couple of pints, and uh, double fisting <laughs> under the table. It's uh, <laughs> You know how they do down there at the dirty old rail. Double fisted. <laughs> yeah, good old double fister. Yeah. We, uh, What's going on with you, dude? Uh, dude, I just got over a little episode myself. I'm just glad to be sitting somewhere oh, other I, than the toilet. I remember you. I, you heard. I yeah. heard about that. Yeah, had, had the squirts. Yeah, dude. Pretty I had bad. the. I. It wasn't even just the Hershey squirts. It was the like full blown flooded Hershey highway. It was. <laughs> oh my god, dude! On Wednesday, where did it come from? I have no idea. On Wednesday, I was working and got. A little nauseous out of nowhere. I puked, and then that was it of that. Wasn't nauseous again after that, but I had the worst diarrhea through yesterday or Sunday. Really? Terrible. That many days? Yeah, that many days. I don't know if it was something I ate or drank, but it came out of nowhere Wednesday morning. And then it was off and on a little bit towards the end, but like Wednesday through Saturday was rough. Jeez, rough. So, like, you've been staying hydrated, pal. Yeah, dude. I've been drinking Gatorade in Canada Dry. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That that many days of diarrhea in a row. I mean, if you were in the 1800s, you might be dead right now. Yeah, they would have put me down. I would have told them to take me out back, like old Yeller. I just can't <laughs> deal with this anymore. Shoot me like a dog. They always <laughs> got massive diarrhea. <laughs> And the problem with it was that you could hear the noises my stomach was making from a quarter mile away. Oh, isn't that the worst? Like if was, you're yeah. at work or something and somebody hears that. And oh, you're like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, that doesn't sound good. And you're like, I know, it's my <laughs> stomach. It's been really weird. Yeah. Is anyone else's seat getting really hot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone just, like, you, you didn't fart, but you can, everyone just hears what's brewing in your belly. Yeah. And it's not one of those, like, ooh, you're getting a little hungry type of, like, stomach urges. Yeah. They're like, oh, he's. Yeah. He's got some issues. It sounded like a like toxic vat of waste just bubbling, and that's all that was making nonstop like that. Man, just a little viral diarrhea. Little viral diarrhea. What can you do? I just wrote it out. Didn't go to the hospital. Didn't do anything like a fucking man. I can't believe that you uh, you came to the show this past <laughs> weekend and just rode that out w- dude, w- without shitting your pants. Dude, I was standing in the back just waiting for something to fly out of my ass or <laughs> blow up that bathroom that everybody was standing right outside of the yeah. entire time. Oh my God, we all would have smelt that if you went to the bathroom in there because the room is so tiny. Oh, you would have heard it, dude. <laughs> you would have heard everything. Yeah. Dude, everything. We would have been right next to that. Dude, it sounded like uh, the torpedoes at Pearl Harbor going into any toilet. It was just... <laughs> it was just fucking it just sounded like taking a tommy gun to a glass you're hitting of water. a courtesy flush before it even hits the water oh yeah yeah you gotta time that thing out i had a stopwatch going as soon as it starts just bo- oh yeah, yeah. Dude, it was- oh that that's brutal man especially when you are you're out somewhere and you gotta go like there yeah. every time i go to new york every single week by the time i get there i have to shit every single time i know 
Like I, I have to time out. I'm like, I, a lot of times I don't eat dinner because I'm like, by the time I get in the car and get to the club, I'm going to have to shit and I don't want to have to go with the club. There. So I got to go find some <laughs> random, disgusting New York, New York bar to take a shit in. <laughs> and then like, you know, sneak in and sneak out because a, l- a lot of places they want you to buy something while you're in there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times, you know, I got to find a, a cool bar that I can sneak in that's not so disgusting, which is impossible to find. Yeah. And it's the worst, dude. I like, can only imagine going into like a 7-Eleven somewhere around there. You're trying to sneak out without having to pay for anything, but they want you to pay for a pack of gum that probably costs 12 bucks in yeah. New York these days. So a lot of times I walk into the place like desperately having to go to the bathroom and I look in there and I'm like... I, I can't. I'd, I'd rather die than go to the bathroom in this joint. It's like the bathroom's that blown up. My worst public restroom experience had to have been on a work trip. And it wasn't even a far away trip. It was the train into New York City at Penn Station on a Wednesday morning. Something about being at Penn Station makes you have to shit your brains out. Yeah. it. I don't know whether it's just the general smell and there's just... I, I have no idea, but yeah. I had to shit myself so bad. And I actually did with coworkers waiting for me. Multiple coworkers. Not like coworkers I was buddy-buddy with, Ugh. but like older co-workers that like you know i kind of respected that have been doing it a bit i was like can you guys just wait a minute and i go no in, worst feeling go in the bathroom and 15 minutes later i come out just looking white like oh holy shit God. lost 10 pounds in there and it was filthy so <laughs> like dan we missed three trains yeah. <laughs> so what is what is your um either worst experience in a bathroom bin and have you ha- do you have any public restroom rituals that you have to do before really dropping a hot one in there i i can't if it's really bad i can't I, like i have to just find a way to stop it in my body right in its tracks and go nope you got to hold it until you get to something that's mildly acceptable um i just i don't have a, a routine i just got to make sure that the seat is just clean clean or what, dry both <laughs> yeah. yeah i think they come <laughs> hand oh, in hand god. that's the, as long as oh god yeah. because you know there's some people where someone's Can't standing at a wet. urinal and they go in there and they just piss in there and it's just like marking that shit up oh my god most of the time yeah most yeah. of the time it's just shit all over this the, the, there's nothing that makes me more angry um than th- this is used to happen at uh old place i used to work at in like mm-hmm. a corporate building you'd walk in and there'd be like an absolute disaster in the stall and it's a corporate building i'm like these every, i know for a fact everyone in here is an adult yeah there's no kids that are running through here that you know just got done daycare or there's no homeless guys that are getting into this building you need to swipe to get in here and I'm, so i'm like this is a adult that clocked into his nine to five today and I'm, and i'm like what who would do this yeah who would do this um oh. makes me really really angry I, I, I don't know let me think of the worst experience i ever had in a um, corporate building though could you just be sitting in a stall and you just hear somebody absolutely demolishing it and you look over and you just see like you know the, their the slacks their ankle yeah they're like blue pinstripe slacks with some loafers on and they're yeah. just fucking crushing it and then they walk out without washing their hands yeah and you're like <laughs> oh i'm gonna see, i'll see you in the meeting in yeah. 15 minutes goes back to the conference yeah. room and know exactly who you are <laughs> can you guys pass me the uh the, the cup of pens yeah. i need a pen and they just, yeah. <laughs> You're going to talk business to me. I know exactly what you did in there. Yeah, I heard the business you were conducting, sir. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I can't think of I'll, if if something comes to mind about the worst experience. But yeah, just generally. How about in a porta potty? Oh, oh, I, I, like on a hot summer day? I, I, I don't think I've ever gone number two in a porta potty. Oh, dude, it's quite an experience. It's one, of those, it's one of those things you have to. I have a to, hard time even thinking about it. There, there's like a number of things that I have had on a list of things that you just have to say by the time you reach, you know, the final <laughs> hole. That was on you, your bucket list. Yeah, yeah. It's like by the time you're on the 17th green, you got to be able to say, Throughout my life, I've done these things here. For me, one of them was to see a live taping of the Jerry Springer show. We talked about Check. that. Check. Um, R.I.P. Jer. Another one, you know, we can probably bring up this list in ongoing episodes as things come to mind, but one of the other ones definitely on a list of maybe a dozen or so things is to take a number two in a handicapped porta potty. Handicapped stall wider. Oh, wow. Good size porta potty on a July summer day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 
Well, th- see that that's that's not even as bad because th- that's more comfortable. I'd like mm-hmm. to see you in a regular porta. Ooh, in July, right outside of a construction yeah. site. Don't give yourself the benefit of getting a handicap stall. That's easier. <laughs> yeah. Now that you think a, a handicap stall in the suburbs on a July day in an area that's not like frequently passed as much, like in a <laughs> random park. I'm talking. Let's go to one this summer. Regular old one. Looks like it's been beat to shit. Graffiti on the sides. Northeast Philly, right outside of the construction site. Yeah, because there you're gonna get you know. You're gonna to get to a handicap porter that's been used a lot. Yeah. If you're coming in that neighborhood, if yeah. there's a handicap porter body in like Haddonfield, yeah, it's probably pretty pristine because there's what maybe one or two people that have used yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? And even if they've used it, it probably smells like something nice, like a quiche or kale. You go to yeah. the wrong town that's that has a handicap porter body. You go this this bad boy's getting used every day. Yeah, by everybody in town. Yeah, and you can get a good idea of what type of business is being done in there just by taking a glance down the hole. You know? Yeah. If if there's a little bit of vomit, a couple of needles, you're in a good spot. Jesus Christ. I want it to smell like burnt McDoubles in there. <laughs> it's what it needs to smell like. Oh, my God. You're not- <laughs> sick, dude. Why would this be on your bucket list? <laughs> not, on a, not a bucket list, per se. It's just a list it's of- on your list. It's on a list of things Why you got to check the off. The fact that it would be on any list. It's on a list of mine. Any, any sort of list of things to do. <laughs> Do you think versus not to do? I like to think my list of things to do is kind of like Steve Buscemi in um, uh, Billy Madison, where he has the lists of people, like his hit list. Only this is a hit list of things that are like, you know, actionable items. And I'm just sitting there. Putting, yeah, you could do it. Putting lipstick on while crossing off. The yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your wife would be so proud. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's Dan. He yep. always wanted to do it. That's Dan. Yep. Yeah. He always wanted to do it. Yeah. You are a sick, disgusting got I got to think this out and maybe, you know. You don't. You don't. <laughs> I would say stop thinking about it. <laughs> I put too much thought into it. That's yeah. what I do. I'm an overthinker. You know, if anybody asks what's your, you know, your one weakness, I'll be like, I care too much. Yeah, that that's the thing that you overthink. Yeah. Not your relationship. <laughs> no, not that, what you got to do for the house. Nope. Just don't, where you haven't taken a steamy dump yet. Don't, I don't think about any fucking house projects. The amount of <clears> screws <throat> that I have stripped by just fucking blatantly putting a uh, screwdriver head on it with on a drill that doesn't fit at all, and I've fucking torched that thing and then i had to you know cut the screw off in the middle of that because i don't think about it now when it comes outside of that i think too much about the dumbest shit and i'm not somebody you would think thinks about anything so yeah i like being outside now i like looking at the backyard and going what can i do can i do here well, can you, well you're looking for <clears throat> stuff to do you've you've put in a nice uh stone uh like a fire pit area with yep. some benches um three benches to three. all my fucking haters out there you got one bench for every hater because everyone said they're like you'll never be able to do it <laughs> everybody from high school who all, are these people i see it all the time they know who they out. are yeah you know i was actually voted in high school least likely to be able to build a bench in my backyard <laughs> And guess what, motherfucker? Guess what? I got three now. Yeah. Eat you your fu- fucking words. You fucking yeah. dumbasses. Yeah. Probably in Italian, right? <laughs> I'm not going to say any names, but I have so many haters out there uh, against my DIY projects, and I just keep <sighs> DIYing them. Mm. I DIY all over everybody's face on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> I just put it right there, and I go, look at all the stuff I DIY. Yeah. <laughs> There's something that clicks in your brain when you become a dad that just... I think that my brain goes on autopilot and I start walking out into the backyard and I start just enjoying the landscape and going, I need to get a tiki torch over there. (laughs) Um, I need a fire pit. Like there's something that it's like, I need this now. Yeah. I'm interested in this. My whole life I was never interested in landscaping. I, I specifically would say I'll never be a landscaping, you know, front yard, backyard, yeah. garden guy now yeah. that's all i want to do yeah dude and you just stand there and you can just look at your yard or just look at those crisp crisp fucking edges right after you get done you go out there with oh, a blower yeah. you get the grass shavings out of there oh that's oh. just one of those things it's a just... leaf lower with a, a clean pristine no leaf backyard <sighs> I mean, is there anything that gets you harder these days? No, no. Like, forget going to a strip club or a little titty bar. All you got to do is just get a leaf blower Clean out. Clean up that backyard. Yeah, just get a rake and just... Have, have you ever... Like, do you watch any of the videos of yard work on uh, the Instagram or the YouTubes? Yeah, I, I check some out on Instagram and uh, just a lot of... D- 
DIY backyard projects via via the YouTube. Yeah, dude. And you can really go so far down rabbit holes on any of these yeah. things. Because you can go, like some people, their entire hobby is nothing but landscaping. And if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I just want to dip my toe in it a little bit. Yeah. Because if you go too far into it, then you're just like making small talk about pesticides. It's like, come on. Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> And you, you wind up starting to spend a lot of money because you just, you oh wanna, yeah, you want to do everything. Dude, it, it doesn't. You want to reroute your whole backyard. Oh yeah. If I, <clears throat> if I literally just kept on going down and didn't stop myself, I'd be out there with a pump sprayer every day, taking uh, soil tests and running all different types of things. Yeah. Like you can go so crazy. I, I was in my backyard the other day and I had to stop myself. I started to get into my head ripping up the entire backyard and laying down sod Ooh. and i started started thinking about that and how nice it would look and i'm like D you brendan you, you're not gonna have time for this guy <laughs> when are you gonna have time to dig up the yeah. entire fucking backyard yep and that's gonna cost you a pretty penny and you got a baby right now yeah but then you're like so it's yeah. a dangerous game yeah that's <clears throat> that's what you know the angel on your shoulder says but then the devil's just like yeah but just imagine how great it would look look yeah. it up on instagram search the hashtags sod. yeah and then knowing me, I would have this huge vision in my head, but then it turn it would turn out looking like Jim Carrey and fun with Dick and Jane. That's most of the time I I do a DIY project. I look at the video. It's some chick who's like, you know, twenty one years old who's able to do it so easily. I'm like, I could probably do this. Yeah. And then I as soon as I start it, I'm like, fuck, I've been duped. <laughs> yeah. This exactly. is way harder than they made made it yep. look. And I try and find <clears throat> something specific to either the tool I'm using or the type of equipment that you I'm... You never have the right tools. No. You never have the right tool or there's one little thing that is slightly different. Yeah. They could have the 18 volt and you could have the 24 <clears throat> volt and that changes fucking everything. You know what? They'll, they, they'll leave out things in their video. They make it seem so easy. Yeah. And yep. they conveniently will leave out. They'll be like, well... I did happen to have a bulldozer for this project, which made this DIY project a lot quicker and a lot easier. I'm like, yeah, like yeah. no shit. Yeah. The one thing that I hate because of how clickbaity YouTube has become, it's all about the thumbnail and the title. And they just make them so clickbaity to where yeah. you see it and you're like, I got to watch this shit. Yeah. They tap into your human psyche and they figure it out. But then you watch it and it's like, here's how you could easily you know, put peat moss down in your backyard. All you need is this $15,000 piece of equipment. Right, right. <laughs> it's just like, what it's the like, fuck, dude? Build a barn door for under $75, yeah. and then you start watching the video, and you're like, this is so fucking hard. Yeah. And you're like, you happen to already own, like, the, the wood or, yeah. or whatever, I mean. Or it's like, you can build it for crazy. under $75, but first you're going to need these tools that'll cost you about five exactly. grand. Exactly, yeah. It, it's... It's unbelievable, but yeah, you know, you got so much stuff going, so do I, and then you got to really pick your your hobbies wisely. We just have so many fun things we want to do. There's just so much. Just guys that like being in our yard. Yeah. You know what the sad thing is, too? Like, you, you get so into it now. I, you know, I, I personally, like, get so into it. And then nobody wants to hang out back there. <laughs> like, so, like I build a, this cool ass fire pit. Sam's like, the smoke's getting in my hair. And I'm like, <laughs> fucking a. I, <laughs> just enjoy it. Enjoy this. I want to enjoy this with my family. It's why I built this family. Yeah. <laughs> and this fire pit, so we could sit out here and fucking enjoy it. Now you shut up and you fucking love this. You shut up and you enjoy it. You love this with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's eventually going to turn years down the road where the happiest moment that you have is sitting out there by yourself, drinking alone, staring at that fire. You know what? That <laughs> is why dad, like that. that is it that, all makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Like that is why, that is how that happens. And uh, Rachel knows that all the time. My bitch wife knows that the best time that I ever had. <laughs> get me by myself sitting somewhere where I'm just drinking a thing and I don't have somebody being like, I you know, the color of the lights is kind of hurting my eyes a little bit. Yeah. Do you think? And it's just like yeah we should change you know what we should change oh are we doing this together <laughs> or are you saying i have to personally yeah do all of the heavy lifting and, here? and then you're gonna watch all the youtube videos you're gonna read all the instruction manuals you're gonna do all the, and then it's just gonna be like uh did you finish that project you know what i i, I will throw out some more beef against the ladies right Ooh, now yeah is why is it an obligatory thing that the guys have to do instruction manuals I, I don't know. She's smarter than me. That's why, what I said why, am I, why am I all of a sudden the instructions guy? 
<laughs> you you could do this too, and you'd probably be better at it. You listen better. Yeah. You follow directions better. Yeah. Well, I can't say that about my bitch wife, but maybe maybe Sam over there. Sam is would definitely she can read better than me. Yeah, for sure. She She's, has a much stronger vocabulary than I do. Yeah, Rachel does. Yeah, following instructions a little bit better. Why Why is that like a, the guy's obligatory job? I think because instruction manuals are very intimidating. It's very small font. It's in twelve different languages. It's in this tight little booklet, or it's folded a million different yeah. ways. If they laid out those instruction manuals on a clipboard, had little check boxes next to it, the ladies would be all over it. Yeah, because Sam will order the stuff and go, "We we got this, and now we can set it up." And I, in my head, I go, "So that means I gotta, yeah, I yep. gotta set the, yeah." Because I'm like, well, "This isn't a heavy lifting situation, so why <laughs> am I obligated to?" be doing the annoying part yeah of setting up an annoying thing there's <clears> so <throat> many of those types of things where it'd be better for somebody with smaller more nimble fingies to get into these little if you have more nimble fingies yeah you got to get into those little um areas especially on like small little tables like this where you need like a number one allen wrench right. to get in i broke an allen wrench that came you know those cheap ones that come with the uh, furniture all the ikea furniture yeah it You're literally so frustrating. It broke inside <clears throat> of the fucking thing and yeah. I couldn't get it out. Yeah. Shit like that always happens. And like, how's it coming with that IKEA table? And yeah. it's like, you have no idea how bad my wrists hurt right now. This is taking me all day. This is really fucking hard. Sam does yeah. set up a, a bunch of shit. I'm giving her a hard time. But yeah. Um, yeah. Dude, there, there are so many things like that that it's such a simple little thing. And that's why I cannot believe. This old house and home improvement shows like that, where they go through an entire episode and it's just all smiles and yeah. sunshine and rainbows. And they're like, yeah, then you just want to do this. I was like, can you just do a straightforward raw footage and just see how many times you guys lose your shit throughout this project? We should do a behind the scenes of this old house where they have all the outtakes of the guy going, God damn it. I've got the wrong <laughs> piece of wood. Yeah, that or he's hammering or something and he just smacks his fucking thumb and yeah. it's just like about to burst his fingernail <laughs> falls off because he smacked it so that's hard. all the shit they do not show they don't they don't show you and it's all propaganda they do not want to show you how these projects really go that's yeah. what we need a but realistic we're, we're a couple of diy guys do you diy guys a lot of my diys are diy did i do this and yeah i always get into it but can never <laughs> stop us my, my wife does some diy projects when it comes to sex <laughs> Just a joke. Yeah, just a joke. <laughs> when My. it comes to sex, she goes, you can DIY that one yourself. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can DIY that one as well. Yeah. Oh, wait, did you show to people your new ink? Oh, yeah. Uh, revealed on the podcast. Look at that. Andrew Jackson. Little Jackson, Jackson boy. So yeah. know which hand to jack off with. We'll never forget. Well, I was wondering, did you know that you did that on your Jill side? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh classic <clears throat> anybody out there you didn't know if you learn one thing from this program that if you hold your right hand out it spells jill and now you got jack and jill on one arm so now you got it's got what do go. you mean it spells jill so like hold your hand out okay you see j i l l oh okay so now you got jill in your right hand but now you got jack up in the uh up at your uh jack and jill you got jack and jill right there below the elbow yeah I'm tatted the fuck <laughs> up right now, bro. That's another thing they said you would never do. <laughs> they said I would never do it, and then I come back and I go, "Well, guess what? Yep, I guess just what? I just DIY'd it. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm tatted the fuck up. It's no big deal. Yeah, um, you know, you should probably be afraid of me. Yep, um, I got I got a nice tattoo as well, but it's in an area most of you guys won't be able to see. Um, right down by my lower back. Dimple. Once we start a Patreon. We'll show it all. We'll reveal it on the pod. I will show you my uh, rainbow butterfly that's down on my back dimples. I will show it off. I'll shave it, and uh, we'll be good to go. I got a couple tats that we could reveal on uh, on on the Patreon that yeah. are that are hidden as well too. Yeah, some nice private areas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like a nine-year-old <laughs> wah wah. wah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to wah wah. Thanks a lot, sweetheart. She's getting another pack of Virginia Slims. Yeah, uh, might be her last, and uh, she is just <laughs> packing a lip. I love nothing more than standing behind people in pharmacies getting uh, cigarettes. Yeah, some of them stopped selling them. I think it was CVS, maybe that stopped. One out of CVS, so. right? Did Walgreens did? But yeah, you mm -hmm. can go into them. And they're just like, yeah, I'll take a pack of new ports. Yep. <laughs> yeah. As they're picking up their lung, yeah. lung cancer prescription. Oh, yeah. 
Um, so why don't we start off some Let's of our on. our articles this week? I um, I saw a <clears throat> I saw another Dear Abby. I just can't get enough of the. Uh, I thought the ones we submitted that never got a response were good. Has she ever written us back? No, that bitch never wrote us Come back. Come on, lady. Come on, Abigail. You're uh, kind of. <laughs> we're two bl- concerned dads over here. Yeah, we got to write some DIY questions into Bob Vila or something. But in the meantime, we'll look at this Dear Abby, which is this is a absolute spectacle gem and i'm glad i found it diamond in the rough dear abby every time i leave the house my wife needs a play-by-play as to where i'm going (laughs) yeah heard of this one guy yeah we've all been there she needs a (laughs) play-by-play of where i'm going how long i'll be away etc years ago i used to be a player but age has caught up with me advice from getting frustrated in massachusetts (laughs) Oh my god! This guy's definitely from Massachusetts. By the way that he said, I used to be a player. Yeah, I gotta imagine he is in his late forties to <laughs> early fifties, and he's frustrated in Massachusetts because. Uh, I, I, do you think he probably called? I'm surprised he didn't refer to her as a broad in this writing. Yeah, yeah. Um, or my bitch wife. Yeah, my bitch wife. Yeah. That's that's strictly a Camden County thing. That's a Camden County program. Yeah, this guy would definitely say, you know, you know, my broad while referring to her at the doctor's office or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I gotta say though, I, I'm I'm with our Mass- Massachusetts brother on this one. Yeah, what is that? What is that? That is the thing. Do you share your location constantly? No. With Sam? Rachel does with me. And I mean, she- I mine as well because, like, via text message, I have to explain often exactly what time i'm leaving what time i'm going to be home how it's currently going yeah it's a lot of play-by-plays uh that is difficult Do you on the program i'm going to say <laughs> that lightly oh it can shit. be difficult for some gentlemen it can be you have and to constantly you know provide updates when you're trying to be present in the moment being a meditative yeah. person that i am i like to be present yeah because while <laughs> you're just you have to focus on you know the, if you're down at the landmark near rowan you got to focus on these girls that you're grinding on from my own experience and you can't do that if you're texting your wife saying this is where you need to go now that's a it's joke really disruptive i have not been to the landmark since at least 2017 yeah um but <laughs> Yeah, this is a real mass hole type of uh, comment here to Dear Abby. Can you imagine a person like this is writing to Dear Abby? Yeah, what a weird program to be <laughs> writing into. To be like, back me up on this, Abigail. Yeah, Abigail, what do you think I need to do? Do you think I should slap her around a bit? What well, do you think? Yeah, what's the deal with that? Should I get a divorce? <laughs> this is this is her response. Dear getting frustrated, I find it disappointing that you have only stopped cheating because time and not your conscience finally caught up with you. Tell your wife what she needs to know. It's the price you are paying to regain your credibility and her trust so it sounds like a little bit of a, a biased column i think it is it's almost as if abby is siding with the women on this you know what um i, I think what you should go. do if you got to give a play-by-play voice memos are now a thing in a voice text message send back a play-by-play of like an impersonation of like al michaels or something yeah send something back of a chris collingsworth or an al michaels or <laughs> just be like what well, <laughs> I, I can't even do an impression yeah. but look at the hands on that guy <laughs> I'll tell you, I was driving home on 295, and I saw a gentleman that just was so large. He looked like he could pick me up and th- toss me around the bedroom. Anyways, back to you, Samantha. <laughs> yeah, just do it. The, stand behind somebody in line at a Home Depot and just comment on. I'm in line behind this guy with yeah. a really nice caboose. Collinsworth is always saying something a little homoerotic. That was the uh, the joke there. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, talking yeah. about soft hands and a plump caboose. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's got such strong thigh muscles that you can see lead right up to each butt cheek, which really gives him the power to be such a fast sprinter. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be home in about 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Just do something like that. That's, <laughs> that, that's a good idea, though. Send him back a play-by-play by like a Chris Collins. Mm-hmm. Do you get a lot of... Uh, request for play-by-play updates no i think we kind of like it's naturally baked in in a way um like she'll just send me stuff and i'll just send stuff of where i am like if i just got somewhere like if i'm going out to an open mic i'll just say i just got here and then be like okay like you know i just got done on stage or i'm about to leave something like that but not a like i am now going to the bathroom i uh now i'm just puked yeah. and diarrhea yeah which, which mine is not you know anywhere near like that as well but uh i think just as a guy like i i am so even when i was a kid like 
my I would get in trouble like that for my parents. Like I would just go out and just be going about my business and I would never check in. And like, you know, if I went to go play basketball yeah. at the schoolyard with some friends and then we were like, Oh, we're gonna go hang out at uh at this kid's house and we're gonna go, you know, jump in their pool or something. Yeah. And then hours would go by and I'd just be enjoying myself, living in the moment, yeah. having a good time. Yeah. And my parents would would call they'd be like we thought you were at the schoolyard we go up there we can't find you we had no idea you were at this other person's house i'm like oh yeah sorry i've like just didn't think to update you because we're moving around all the time yeah yeah and uh so it's a very similar situation where i'm i am negligent but uh i i just don't enjoy having to update anybody but i i realized that that is you know that is you know, on me. How how long do you think you could go these days with um, your old lady without saying anything? If you say you're going out somewhere, how long could you go without providing a oh, update? An hour. Oh man. Yeah, I would say an hour. <laughs> and now, about an hour. You got about sixty minutes. And you're gonna make the best of Within it. Within an hour, I am getting a text that's like, "Where are you?" <laughs> what's going on yeah. i feel like i'm gonna get killed for saying any of this on this podcast so everything i'm saying here is a joke for the program <laughs> and everything i'm saying has 90 percent uh truth behind it <laughs> yeah but yeah I, i'm generally just kind of negligent and i'm just not i'm not paying attention a lot and yeah. then i you know i just get myself in in trouble because i'm not providing updates on yeah. where i'm at what time i'm gonna be home yeah, yeah, and that's always the thing is when are you gonna be home? I'm just moving around a yeah. lot, dipping and a bopping left I'm and right, getting shit done. Yeah, tailgating yeah. at XTU. Barely, I got shit to do. We're yeah. tailgating the Buffett concert. We're about two cases deep right now. Yeah, get off my case. Yeah, this is the first time I drank a four loco since college. Let me live. Yeah, yeah, and I just beer bonged it. Yeah. yeah, I know I'm diabetic, but I'll probably be fine. Yeah, and I'll be home by the time the kid wakes up tomorrow morning. Just just relax. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the really now what it is. It's like if any of us are out of the house, um, you're just you're constantly wondering. Like you have to know because you're like, oh my god, when are you going to be back to relieve me of my duty of watching the baby? Yeah, damn. It's like you're literally the lifeguard is on the stand, and you just went to go take your lunch break. And yeah. You're like, how long do I have? Yeah. What's an ample amount of time for them to be on the clock before their next break? Yeah, it's, I mean, anything after an hour and a half, you're like, oh my God, like, please get home so that, you know, yeah. I can, you know, be yeah. relieved of, of my duties. Damn. Louis C.K. has a great joke that I just saw pop up on Instagram. Um, I think he was on like Conan or something, but he was talking about how having kids with his wife, <clears throat> he was like, you just, you get so angry at each other um, and you like don't, like, if you're taking care of the kid by yourself, it's it's so difficult mm -hmm. that um, God, I'm gonna fuck this up. But he was talking about how like you you start to not believe each other yeah. because if you have to deal with the kid by yourself, like if the other person gets sick, you're fucked. Yeah. So if all of a sudden you know your wife is like, oh, I'm sick. I I don't feel good. Like I have diarrhea. You're like, show me the diarrhea. Like I <laughs> like you, you don't you don't believe them. I need a doctor's note yeah. right now. He's like, show me it then. <laughs> All right, because I can't do this by myself. Yeah, no, I can see that getting down. You're just you're, you're fighting for your your own. Um, they can't take PTO like that. Yeah, yeah. You need a, you need a three week lead time before they take any PTO or vacation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that that's the tough part. It's like uh, if you're in a situation where you know the other person's out of commission for whatever reason, God, you're just so screwed. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> shit. Yeah, it's tough. Damn. Well, I I hope you can uh, you know continue. Um, it, making that stretch of time go even longer every single day of past an hour that yeah. you could be out at a, you know, a tailgate or uh, wherever. Yeah. Um, Hooters. So, Hooters. Yeah. The Hooters and Maple Shade, which is unfortunately closed, but that's where I would be. <laughs> um, so uh, speaking of a little bit of relief. Uh, so that particular story is one giant, giant toilet flush. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are some things in the program that have to be, <laughs> 
a future Patreon episode. I'll, yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. You, you see, we just bring up whatever is, we're just letting it fly yeah. with some news stories, things we see. And what's and going on in the news. If you've ever been on the internet, you know you can find some shit. So there's some things that even we can't discuss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as bad as we are. However, let's get something a little bit more local to the area. And uh, I don't know if you saw this video from a um, Barstool Sports video of a guy having a great time at the Sillies game. Did you happen to see this? Oh, is this the, the chick grinding on him? Yeah. Let me see this. Dude, check this. I'll take another look at it. Yeah, dude. Look at those fucking... She's giving him a full stripper lap dance. And he's wearing a bucket hat. I mean, I bought season tickets after seeing this video. How pilled up are these guys? <laughs> Uh, up, I, she looks like she could probably have about 1,500 pills in her shirt there. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Bucket hat, though. Screams Delco. Um, I think he's wearing a sleeveless shirt as well. Did he just motorboat her? Uh, I think he was attempting to. I just love how there's no concern of the kids sitting in front <laughs> of them. It, how is nobody else like next to them? How are these guys so invested in the game right now? Yeah. They're just like, hey, bitch, get out of the way. It's a 3-2 count. Yeah. <laughs> just... <laughs> I mean, yeah, look at all the old white guys around her. Oh, yeah. There's no ushers fleeing to the scene. She's, like, literally about to pop those puppies out. Real or fake? Um, I, I, the, I, I heard a lot of, uh, comments a lot of chirping going on in the uh, replies there there were some folks who uh, were skeptical of her womanhood if you will whoa um, they they weren't 100 percent sold because you can hear if you really jack the volume on it you can hear a glimpse of her voice and it kind of sounded like that explains why he was drinking a bud light <laughs> yeah he had a full-blown big daddy 24 ouncer of bud light and this is what happens at the phillies game man if you <laughs> next time i need a lap dance i know where to go yeah i love like you have to be a level of fucked up to be in public doing something like that where they they don't look like they have any idea like that that, that is out of you know yeah <laughs> like not in the right place to do that yeah yeah <clears throat> i'm looking at some of the comments i want to see if somebody brought it up someone did say that service is extra um yeah that guy's getting charged a lot of money for that um <laughs> yeah i think he, he hired a hooker for that yeah I, no i don't think he hired her i think she was just uh on her break from cheerleaders down the street from, yeah uh, right over near oregon there's that uh cheerleaders right there near the uh old citizens bank yeah and, i think uh, that's that's just a classic delco girl who's fucked up and just having a good time she's like maybe just got off a, a fresh new boob job uh-huh wanted to flash them show them yep. off oh What's uh, watch the Phillies game? Yep. Oh, you're more interested in this? Well, check out my new boobs. Yeah, she's oh, letting the dogs pay? bark a bit. Let the dogs bark. Yeah, let them bark out <clears> there. <throat> and here's here's the one guy that did say, "Careful, that's a dude." And his picture is <laughs> of him wrestling. And someone said, "Says the guy wrestling other dudes in undies." Yeah, <laughs> he said it's a singlet. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, that shit's gay. Yeah, hey, that's gay. Why don't yeah. you come over here and mount me? <laughs> yeah. Here's my address if anybody wants to come over here and shoot some drills. <laughs> Someone said I caught an STD watching this. Um, uh, there's been a lot of things that I have seen in my day <clears throat> on the internet that has gotten me. Uh, yeah, a lot of filth going on. A lot of filth. If I don't have an STD, my computer certainly does after watching this. Yeah. So, um, that that's a good one. Um, classic classic Phillies fan. Just you know, no regard for the public. There's a, there's a kid wearing a Harper rally hat right in front of her. There's you know parents, moms, grandparents, guy in a camo hat, bucket hat. Doesn't matter. Imagine being a kid at your first Phillies game and seeing that, and you're like, I love baseball. I absolutely love it. And this is in broad daylight too. So I mean, it's not even night. This is probably a one o'clock Sunday game. Yeah. Man, <laughs> I did not realize that there was a uh, Ray Finkel theory floating around about this. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. dude. Mr. Finkel. Yeah, there definitely is. <laughs> and uh, shoot, they look like they could be in the Hall of Fame section, too. I could be wrong. I could be mistaken. But yeah. where everyone's looking and where they're seated, uh, he paid top dollar for those tickets and uh, Ticket to Paradise in that seat. Yeah. Well, you know what? After this Sixers series, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, let's get, let's get back on the Phil strain. Yeah. Because we cannot rely on the Sixers for anything. However... 
it is it's somewhat of a silver lining if you can look at it like this is that at least they didn't get to the finals and lose yet again yet another probably record setting for the fourth time Philadelphia yeah. championship loss. Yeah, it's been a rough year for <laughs> for Phillies fans. Yeah. But it made me appreciate some of the other teams that you know, Phillies teams that took it all the way. Yeah. To, I mean, the Sixers can't even get out of the fucking first round of the playoffs the past however many years. Yep. You know, just yeah. a loser's mentality. And I giving I, up. At least these guys are fighting. They're getting strippers to fighting for hard. Their fans. They're fighting hard in their khaki shorts. Yeah. Uh, their cargo shorts, I should say. That's yeah. right. You know, he's got a pair of those on. You don't go to a Phillies game wearing a powder blue bucket hat without cargo shorts filled in the pockets on yeah. the side. What do you think is in this guy's cargo shorts pockets? I would say a handful of coins. Yeah, Chuck, like, Chuck E. Mm-hmm. Cheese coins. Yeah, maybe some Chuck E. Cheese coins, some uh, some you know, some tokens. Yeah, and I, I think on the left side, he definitely has a um, uh, homemade dipping station. He's got some mm. blue cheese and wings in there, <clears throat> dipping on the go. He's yep. got a can of dip too. I was just gonna <clears throat> say he definitely has he's a got lip some dip. skull in there. He's got some skull in there. Um, he's not doing lines of uh, coke off this girl's tits. He's just packing a lip off of them. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And she probably brought the the dip herself, actually. <laughs> that guy's yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, that's dude. so funny. He's just pilled out at the Phillies game. Like I don't even know what's going on right now. <laughs> but he's outside enjoying the weather and a nice ball game. What a great day for a ball yeah. game. Yeah, <laughs> it's good old American fun. Yeah. Now we're gonna <clears throat> take a a short little shift here. Um, how about some tech stuff happening? There are new AI cameras being set up on highways to catch drivers who throw trash out of their car windows. Do you like the idea wait, of wait, say that again? There's some AI cameras that are going to be able to detect when drivers throw trash out of their car windows wow. on the highway. Um, I imagine that this is being done oh, in the UK. They will automatically send images to enforcers, and um, they're going to start ticketing people based kind of like a red a red light camera. Kind of like a narc. Yeah, kind of like a fucking narc, only it's going to be the robots doing it. That's like the main thing that AI seems to be getting used for right now is just narc shit. Just narking. It's like, hey, we're going to be able to scan your face and see any little petty crime you may have yeah. you may have done. May have done. We saw you throw this bag of McDonald's out of your window the other day, and we also caught you getting a hand job on the 405. So <laughs> that's going to be a fine. We, re- we scanned your face, and we recognized that you were getting a lap dance at the last Phillies game. <laughs> yeah. And you go, Jesus Christ, man. My wife saw that in the mail. You are getting charged with public indecency. Here is a screenshot of the action. Yeah. Dude, so when I was getting my tattoo, the guy that was... Uh, my tattoo artist was talking about he uh he bird watches and <laughs> yeah i love a bird watcher yeah and he said there's there's ai software out there that you is so good that like uh it, it's installed in the camera and it automatically will track to find like like can identify which birds are which like that easily really and like just by the colors of them Huh. Yeah, by all sorts of stuff like that. You know what's crazy is that they can do that with birds, but they have trouble doing that with humans. Yeah. There's a lot of problems that they have matching <clears throat> that up with people, and uh, it's actually caused a lot of like advertising to come out for specific Google Pixel phones where <clears throat> they um, are able to detect... Um, uh, black people a lot easier. Oh my. I'm not even saying that's a uh, legitimate what? fact. No, dude, it's true. Have you seen the ads? What? It's just specific. A- iPhones are not as good at detect. Like people will put up like their face ID cameras, really? and with for whatever reason, with black people, the cameras can't read their faces what? as well. So there was a literally? lot. Of, there was literally racial battles going back and oh forth. My. Like, even AI is racist saying that all y'all look alike. Yeah. Jesus and it, Christ. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, I would think that, like, that could be hurled at so many different uh, racial ethnicities. But for black people, it wasn't. And Google's advertising for their phones for a while to take a shot at iPhone was literally showing that, like, our phones will recognize you no matter what race you are. Like, it was oh an entire God. thing. Wow. I didn't know that. It was like a smear campaign. Yeah. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> I don't, it's, it, it sounded like I was teeing up a fucked up 
joke, but I'm like, <laughs> that's what I thought you were doing at first. I'm like, Jesus, Dan. No, Careful, no. Dan. We've there diversified this podcast. We have grown <laughs> as podcasters. We have brought on, and by the way, speaking of that, our sports analyst, uh, um, in-house sports analyst, uh, Brian Isley, who was over here, he did predict the Sixers were going to get fucking smoked I, on Sunday. I saw your post. I'm, I'm sure he did. He was exactly right. We're at a show in Turnersville, and he's like, man, the Sixers are going to get smoked, and then they're going to fire Doc Rivers, and that's yeah. exactly what they did. Yep, that's exactly uh, what we've done with all of our past yeah. couple of coaches. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, th- that AI st- stuff, though, it's, uh, it's, it's just all narc shit. Because it's real. there are some really good uses and use cases for it and ways that you can do it. It's not... Um, it doesn't have a mind of its own yet. Are they using point. it for a lot of criminal cases, like to identify people? I'm sure they're starting <clears> to get <throat> that in there. They've probably been working on something on the back end, but now it's so like consumer facing of what people can just do with it and what they can spin out of it. Um, I feel like you have to have some type of development background to really build something cool with it, or ask it, or like prompt it to do something. Yeah, cool. Yeah, to make it. But but now that it like it's out there, I feel like they're gonna they're gonna have so many different. Um, things that they can apply it to yeah. for whatever you, like your specific app or you know if you're into bird watching hey let's make an ai thing for that specifically yeah there's gonna be so many <clears throat> things that they can apply it to oh yeah between that anything and i i just like the fact that you can ask it and what i go to it for is stuff instead of asking google i'll ask that because i don't have to sift through different results and go to websites and read through all the bullshit and get to the answer i can just ask it if it's something i think that it would have a knowledge base on yeah like you know what does this uh you know, <clears throat> battery mean with this voltage or something like it would know that like right. that type of shit um i have one more thing we can wrap up here on uh this seemed pretty relevant as well i caught my friend breastfeeding my baby twice um what the fuck now this is not you haven't caught me doing that at this point but no, there but is please feel free i'm i'm dying to get, you know yeah talk, you, you get this baby off my hands yeah i gotta share the udders you know um <laughs> the new york post writes some crazy shit breast fe- breast friends forever if there was ever a time to cry over s- spilled milk a malaysian woman said she was traumatized after discovering that one of her friends had breastfed her baby multiple times behind her back what, like what is the scenario here she's like hey i'm gonna grab some drinks in the kitchen do you guys need anything you come back and your baby's sucking on her tit <laughs> or <laughs> you know where you babysitting the kid and then you you look at your in your ring camera and you see that she's got your your baby oh. chowing down yeah yeah dude it's <clears> just <throat> like oh well, you know all i saw in there was some you know didn't see any breast milk of her own so i just figured i'd pop her on here yeah yeah <laughs> i just go straight from the tap figured it'd be easier yeah and so I'm assuming it's another mom who's got some uh, some milk in store. She uh, detailed the alleged busty betrayal on a TikTok video with a busty <laughs> betrayal. Could the New York Post use <laughs> any more puns for this? They went to ChatGPT and said, "Can you just pun this up for us?" Yeah, yeah. over three two point nine million views, about three million views there. Um, I didn't expect she could do such a thing. The woman said. Um, as the woman had her hands full with event planning, she decided to leave the tot in the care of her friend that was busy carrying things when I arrived. She asked asked for me, so I gave him to her um, because she was close to me. Um, let me see. Read down through here. <laughs> Little did she know her friend had pulled a fast one when she wasn't looking. Suddenly, while I was carrying the things, I saw that she was doing something at the back in an open hall. Turns out she was breastfeeding her when she confronted her bestie about the incident. The woman explained that she'd nursed Tater because she was crying with the implication that the tyke wanted food. Now, see, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, well, you <laughs> grab a bu- What's hilarious to me is, okay, after the first time, <laughs> what do you do after the after the first time you catch your friend breastfeeding your kid? You go, all right, you know. I'll give you one. That's I'll, a mulligan. I'll have one mulligan there yeah. for let my kid suck your tit. Just one. But, you know, fool me twice. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I couldn't accept her excuse, and I don't know. I'll be haunted by this incident. Uh, which mother can accept her baby being directly breastfed by someone else while the mother herself has breast milk? Worst of all, this wasn't the first time her friend allegedly played wet nurse to her son. According to her, her mother caught the friend doing the deed again a little while later. So there's number two. You let it happen again? It happened again. Needless to say, the woman's had a tough time shaking it off her mind. All I can think about is my kid sucking someone else's tits. Yeah. It's just, oh man, imagine having that sit in your head. This lady must have a, a, uh, a freak fetish that she just really likes getting the butter sucked out of her boobs yeah it's uh she said it's now difficult for her to trust other people um 
I take good care of my children, ensuring nobody randomly kiss or hug them because I'm afraid of them getting infected by diseases. Um, and just, you know, for, you know, scientific cases, a lot of people listen for informational factoids on here. The American Academy of Pediatrics does discourage women from informally sharing breast milk due to the risk of transmitting disease. You know, I think that this lady was just trying to be a good friend. She's I, I, like, you know what? I'm going to, you know, what? I'm going to take some of this off of your plate. Yep. I am going to take my tit out and I'm going to do the job for you. It, what a good friend. And it doesn't even say that her friend was a mother or with that was actively breastfeeding at the same time. Yeah. I feel like she probably wasn't even when she's just like, oh, this is uh, the kids crying. All right. Let yeah. me just, I mean, what a move. <laughs> what a power yeah. move. Yeah. Maybe she just thought that that's what you do. She's like, well, I just had a glass of Cabernet. You know, I, <laughs> I could probably, could probably get something out of the tap here. The last line that I'll, I'll, I'll read from this because the wordplay is just amazing. It says, imbibing extra maternal mammary juice can also expose an infant to medications, alcohol, drugs, or other contaminants. Yeah. So, mammary juice, I've never heard that one. I don't know if that's a scientific term or not. Um, but yeah, could you imagine just some South Jersey lady just taking your kid over at the old rail? She came wandering to the old rail from uh, where would be a good town to get some new porty type of breast milk from uh, i don't know I, I would applaud it i would go thank you so some people go hey i'll come over what do you need what do you need help with you need some food i go no i need you to breastfeed my kid yeah it's a good <laughs> it's a good friend right there. that is a very good friend i'll be over tomorrow i could, it, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I could see how that would fuck a kid up though where you know he uh he grows up to be an alcoholic yeah yep you know drinks and, nothing but white russians <laughs> <laughs> He's just, he's <laughs> fucked. He's just, he, he goes to school and inside of that little cardboard milk thing, he just pulls out a flask and starts pouring. On. Just can't get enough of this stuff. Yeah, yeah dude. He was, he was exposed at a young age of just getting all sorts of tits. Yeah, just from some woman that came from Gloucester City whose milk tasted, her breast milk tasted like fucking, uh, uh, what's a good, uh, not Sky Vodka, that's too classy, more of a Burnett's right yeah yeah definitely burnett's kind of crowd man oh god man that that is sexual abuse that is that's a sexual abuse that which is how we like to end we do like to end episode. on sexual abuse uh especially when it comes from a good friend trying to do a good deed so <laughs> um <laughs> my russians <laughs> Oh, man, that's you can funny. feel for incorporate that into. I'll, I'll be one of those people that says, "I'll use that in your uh, talent show." Use that in one of your skits. Yeah, use that in one of your skits. There, we'll do a skit yeah. of men breastfeeding other men's babies. We can yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what else? Uh, we you didn't get to um, recap the the show. We were talking about my diarrhea, but overall, the show <laughs> was cooking. Show was great, man. It was uh, it was great energy. Every comic killed. Yeah. Um, sold it out for the third time in a row. Um, so we're, we're going to keep doing it monthly. If you're not getting tickets to the show at Reup Fashion, you you're fucking up. missing out. Dude. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a solid time. Fun little thing to do on the weekend. If you're in South Jersey, mm -hmm. you got to come out to the next one. Um, everyone's been saying, they're like, where are you finding these comics? And I'm like, literally around the corner. From yeah, there. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, there's so many good comics in the area. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. Like we have an endless amount of people that we can get on these shows that will do a great job. Um, and I feel like it's building. Pe yeah. People are hearing more about the show. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So we're, we're going to keep doing it monthly if you guys keep coming out. So you guys keep coming on out. Do it through the summer. It's on Haddon Ave right there. That's Haddon Township, right? Or yep. is it Haddon Field? Haddon Township. It is Haddon Township. It's on the Bourbon Street of South Jersey. Yeah. Haddon Ave. Right by Brewers. Right by Keg and Kitchen. Right by... Um, right, right across from the Haddon Town Center Apartments. So if you know the area... Uh, it's right around there. There is a nice uh, little um, convenience uh, tobacco smoke shop right across the yep. street. It looks like <clears> a prime <throat> space to uh, sell some goods behind it afterwards as well. So there's nothing but opportunities there. It's yeah. only a matter of time before Nick Sirianni or somebody comes to the show. Oh, we, um, we did have we had a professional UFC fighter at the show. Yeah, that yeah. That was pretty sick. Shout out to, uh, to Andre. Yeah. That dude is a fucking beast, dude. He's, I turned to him at one point. I was like, yo, if anything gets out of hand, I'm looking at you for security. Yeah. I mean, dude, he, that dude is a fucking. 
Dude, I, I would love Shit brick house. I would love to have somebody like that that could just stand next to the performance thing just for anybody that wants to be cute and make the show about them or something yeah. because that's really what it's turned and some people were mentioning that yeah. I, I don't know if you were standing there but I forget somebody was talking about like they were in the back like yeah like, like you want to be like a heckler you're going to say something that we get to like heckle like they think because they see it online like oh this is what we right. if they haven't been to a lot of shows like that's kind of what the perception is being. Yeah. It, it's kind of wild but yeah I mean between those shows there's a lot happening in south jersey and especially in the comedy scene general philadelphia area yeah. but there's bad boys crawling all over the we place. had a ufc fighter at our last show you got to come out to the next one also shout out to tara we got our first south jersey bad boy merch for, oh for yeah jackie boy we got the uh baby onesie oh, yeah i'll have to uh maybe i'll send you a picture we could put it up here but uh, Tara, uh, she made a little onesie for Jackie Boy. Yeah. That uh, is his official South Jersey bad boy uniform. Put it up on the IG of him in the um, yeah. in the onesie next to the nightlight. If anybody has any South Jersey bad boy merch, we're going to open a P.O. box and we're going to send it all over yeah. here. You what other... What? What other merch do you need? I was going to say, if if anybody would be interested in Dan and I making South Jersey Bad Boy t-shirts, comment in because it's something that that we're thinking about for the future. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. That would be actually pretty sweet. With our logo on it. And logo may, on Maybe it. some of our uh, famous sayings. You know, like tune into the program on, on the back or something. Yeah. What's in your ass this What's week? What's in your ass this week? <laughs> or we can have the logo at South Jersey Bad Boy. We could put, fuck, let's get some custom embroidered names on it, but we'll get like very South Jersey things with some imagery on it of something. Yeah. Maybe we get, we make them bowling shirts. Bowling shirts. That's, yeah. We should just make a on it, bowling on the team. Back, South Jersey Bad Boys. South Jersey Bad We should make a bowling team and we can go up to Lickety Splits on 73 and we'll just fucking run the yeah. spot. Speaking Speaking of lickety split, let's hook up. <laughs> yeah. The la- the last thing I forgot that I forgot to mention as well. Um we got um a couple of bad boy crossover shows that are coming up in June. We gotta clip this up and post it. Do we? Yeah, we do. Yeah. South Jersey comedy with the South Jersey bad boys. June first, uh, second and third. Wait, we're, we're, oh, that's right, that's right. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot that we uh, we got booked on those. Yeah, yeah, we got we got uh, some South Jersey comedy shows. Yeah, so we got some shows coming up right now. Actually, let me um, let me do real quick. Pull up the uh, the ticket link for those because I want to get our um, uh, uh, headliner's <clears throat> name correct oh, here. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so we're doing like an Irish comedy thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Forgot, but the, yeah, the South so, Jersey boys. So th- this their first booking request as this, a, as a team, as a team, a booking request that came through the podcast and uh, South Jersey comedy. Check them out. Do shows all over Gloucester County, Camden County, down towards the shore as well. What we're doing on Friday, June second, it's going to be a fundraiser in Pittman, New Jersey, at the Highland Fire Company, and it's going to be headlined by Brian uh, Kylie Ky- Kelly Kylie. I really fucked that up. Brian from the Conan O'Brien show. He's a head writer on the Conan O'Brien show um is going to be headlining that show it's going to be an irish comedy night with me brendan and brian there and then the next Mm -mm. night we're going to be at the atlantic city country club uh and down and that's going to be a real swanky show swanky so we got a little friday night saturday night action uh that saturday night's going to be my big birthday bash june 3rd at the atlantic city country club on this show so it's going to be pretty wild pretty killer shows Pittman and atlantic city coming oh, yeah. up in june um so yeah we'll have to uh clip something up for that put it out on the program and uh you know come on out we got a lot of shit happening come on out